Okay, so this demonstration is going to be the programming challenge number one in chapter in your chapter five book, Sum of Numbers. So it says write a program that asks the user for a positive non-zero integer value. Uh, the program should use a loop to get the sum of all the integers from one to the number entered. For example, uh, if the user enters 50, uh, the loop should find the sum. Okay, so Pretty easy how we set up. We got a class name. It's going to probably be some sum of numbers, let's say. So we'll do, you know, we'll create main and then we'll also do the sum of numbers when we create that. So methods um, also should be easy. Um, aren't we just setting the sum and then getting the sum? So whatever number we pass in 50, you'd add up all these and find the sum. So you'd set it and then you'd get it. So we'll call it set sum and we'll call it get sum. And set sum is going to pass an integer in. So int and we'll just get, we'll just call it number because we're just asking the user to enter in a number, right? And really that's other than very, so then other than very, so the variables, um, we would got we would have int number and sum. I think that's all we would use because that's all we're asking for a number right here. Asking the user enter the number, and then we're doing a loop that would loop through each one and add up the sum. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. So let's do that. So um, file new program. And what do we call it? Uh, sum of numbers. So we'll do main sum of numbers. Whoops, did I put a space in there? Yeah, I might have to delete that and do that again. That annoys me. I don't like that at all. So let's see what happens. Main. Uh, where'd it go? See if I can re re redo this. So um, rename sum of numbers. Also rename the project. Uh, let's just call it sum of numbers two. That should fix it. Now you guys obviously would just create sum of numbers instead of sum of numbers two. Um, here we go. So open that up. Oh, I don't like that. It, it did some of dot. No, I think that's going to screw things up. So I'm going to just delete this and um, yeah, delete it. So I'm going to create a new one. I, I named it wrong. I don't want to. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's not a bad lesson to learn either. So new project, um, main sum of numbers. And we'll say it's two. And... Again, this will be the first time you guys write it, so you won't have to call anything too. So right click new, right like right, right click new Java class and call it sum of numbers. All right, so we're gonna since we're getting information, we'll import. And I'm actually gonna make this screen larger because I think my videos have been kind of coming out a little bit blurry. So import java.util.scanner and whoops and this is the wrong one to do it in so let me go to main scroll in and i'm going to delete some of these comments to clean it up a little bit paste that in there and here we go so we'll do scanner my scanner equals new scanner system dot in and then what do we got? Sum of numbers, my sum of numbers equals new sum of numbers. Okay, and so it's system.out.println. Uh, I gotta put an S on there. Um, please enter a number. 
So int number equals my scanner dot next int. Now this it says to enter in um, a non a positive non-zero integer. So um, this is a good time to teach you how to do this properly. So it to use a do while loop here. Um, do while number is mm, let me think here real quick while number is less than I'm just going to say one while number. What's wrong with this? So let's do this right here. Okay, that fixes it. So, and actually, this should probably I always put the variables up at the top. So, So this this is going to allow this will put in zero right and as long as the number is less than one then it's going to redo this so it will force um, you to enter in a positive number you know and maybe that's where you could put in here enter a positive pos positive number okay so that forces the user to enter in a positive number okay. Um, and so once we have your number populated, we can say uh, my sum of numbers dot set sum, and we would pass in the number, and then we can just do the sum is my numbers dot get some okay and there's errors here because we haven't created this yet so whoops and this needs to be my sum of numbers okay so we got errors though that's fine so we go in here and we say uh, public void set sum and we accept the number right because we passed it in number we got to accept it and so remember uh, we always re rename our variables to my number and so we would say my number is equal to number so now we've got our number that will be our limit so then we can do a for loop for int i equals zero i is less than or equal to our limit of my number i plus plus then all we do is we create a sum value sum is equal to i basically and so then we would have sum right here as well and so first time through you get zero so zero is set to sum it adds it in there then then i becomes one and maybe you know we could save a, a space is one i don't know i always start at zero for the most part it doesn't matter in this case. Um, so then I would become one. One would be added to sum. So zero plus one, sum is now one. And then I becomes two. Two plus um, the original one uh, becomes three, and then so on and so forth. Um, and if you want, what I can do here is I could just do a system.out.println and um, we could call this, we could create our table, no, uh, we'd have to do it before here. We could say println, we could say the sum, sum, and then i or whatever right here. And this would be sum plus and then some blanks and then plus i. And the only reason I'm doing this is just to demonstrate, you know, what it looks like as it's running through our for loop. 
So then I can just do public int get sum, and then I can return the sum. Okay. So let's run this real quick and see what happens. See if this cons kind of comes up all right. So let's say 50. So I'm not going to go through all these, but 0 and 0. So i becomes 1, sum is 1, then i is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3. And again, everything's kind of lined up junky. So maybe I just run it again and, run and show you. Um, let's do that 50 again. Okay, cool. So that's a little bit better. So sum is zero. So one and two is three. Uh, three and three is six. Six and four is ten. Ten and five is fifteen. All the way down to the final sum, which is twelve seventy-five. Okay. So you can kind of see now again your 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 the program didn't ask you to display this stuff right here, but this is just a good way to test and see what's happening with your variables as you're running through your loop. All right, all it wanted was it would was it to return the sum, but a lot of times it's good to display all the information in there so you can actually see what's going on from each what step now let's test to see if this works because this wasn't really most of you probably wouldn't write this and test for this but let's see here so 50 worked fine but let's say I enter negative 5 let's see what happens up oh, please enter a number positive so it gets here it says and this is the power of your do while loop is you can run this one time and if it's wrong it makes you run it again so this is how you would actually test kind of in the real world. But please enter a number, enter a positive number. I entered a negative 5. Negative 5 is less than 1. That's true, so it's doing it again. So if I say negative 3, enter, do it again until I enter a positive number 5. And then you can see that works properly. So uh, the we, we got to demonstrate the do while loop for testing purposes here. And then the for loop for our uh, figuring out our sum total. So uh, that is it for this video.